Hello, my name is Glenn Berry and I'm the Principal Environmental Consultant for Atma Environmental. In this video, I'd like to speak to you about contaminated soil testing and disposal. So within Victoria and other states, uh, prescribed industrial waste will be categorized as A, B, or C, depending on the level of contamination. There's a number of other waste categories as well, solid, inert, and putrescible, and uh, sometimes things are a little bit more judgmental where we have soil mixed with solid waste. Prescribed industrial waste, contaminated soil, categorized A, B, or C, is very expensive to remove. Removal of the most contaminated soil, category A, is extremely dear. Our job is to undertake that testing as effectively as possible to minimize absolutely the cost that you're paying for disposal, while at the same time having uh, you meet all regulatory requirements and ensuring that none of your trucks are turned back at the landfill. A site we're working on today has some examples of all the various types of waste that we might encounter. Here we have solid inert waste, mainly metal, but it could include wood, plastic and other things, essentially free from soil. Solid inert waste can also include concrete, bricks and rubble, like we have here. Here we have a pile of soil, but it's mixed with plastic and metal and other waste, so it can't go off as a clean fill, and it needs to be tested to determine the level of contamination within the soil. So it may be category A, B, or C, but in any event, it won't be going off as fill material given the admixed solid material in it. Here we have a brush pile which would be categorized as a putrescible waste assuming there's no admixed soil with it. Now in devising a program to classify soil for off-site disposal purposes it's important to follow the relevant guidelines. Part and parcel to that is knowing the volume of soil to be classified. Here we've got quite a small stockpile and there's a minimum number of samples which need to be obtained and tested in order to classify any amount of soil, no matter how small. Here we have soil stockpiles generated from decontamination of the site. We think it's going to be contaminated but we'll do stockpile testing to actually confirm the disposal classification of the soil. It'll be category A, B or C. If we're lucky it might be fill material. Now, classification of contaminated soil for disposal purposes is not as straightforward as putting a few samples in a jar and having them tested. Adherence to the relevant guidelines means that we need to understand the volumes of soil involved, the types of contaminants, and arrive at a sampling plan that aims to minimize the amount of contaminated soil going to landfill. Helena behind me is sampling this large volume of soil for disposal purposes. You can see pins placed where we've collected samples and we've optimized the number of samples uh, to be able to segment the stockpile into smaller areas for possible classification separately. Having a well thought out sampling plan for soil disposal and classification is important because it means that we can then segment a large volume of soil into smaller parcels meaning that we can minimize the amount of cost to the client at the landfill. All right, so here we are on top of what is quite a massive pile of soil ready for classification. We're obtaining all the samples we need and it's important for you to understand that you need to have an experienced environmental consultant on your job using a well thought out sampling plan and capable of applying all the relevant statistical tests to ensure that this soil is classified to the minimum level possible. This is to minimize your costs when it goes to landfill. Hi, I'm Helena. I'm an environmental consultant with Atma Environmental. Glenn's just asked me to give you a couple words about what happens to our soil samples once we've collected them. They go into an esky with ice and that's to preserve the integrity of the sample and try and keep it the same conditions as in the field. Um, and then they're sealed with a little sticker and all of the samples in the esky are marked on a sheet called the chain of custody and everyone that passes with this esky has to sign that so we make sure the integrity of the samples and where they've been is preserved to get accurate readings, accurate descriptions and good results for our clients. So wrapping up contaminated soil testing and disposal then. A few key points knowing what are the likely contaminants, what are we testing for, what's the volume of soil, where does it come from, are we testing a small pile, a large pile, 
can that pile be segmented into smaller domains for possible separate classification? The soil sampling procedures, decontamination, appropriate procedures have to be followed. And preparing a factual report which can be given to the facility accepting your soil without having any trucks turned back all the time minimizing the amount of uh, costs involved in the entire process. I'm Glenn Berry, Principal Environmental Consultant for Atma Environmental, and I invite you to give us a call if I can be of any assistance discussing your needs relating to soil contamination, testing, and disposal.